proton pump inhibitors, medications like omeprazole and lanzoprazole. These are a bit of a pet hate of mine because they often get used to paper over symptoms like heartburn, acid reflux and indigestion. And this demotivates people to tackle the root causes of their symptoms, which can often be solved by very basic lifestyle changes, some of which I'll go through shortly. But why even bother when you can just get a medication to reduce your stomach acid and reduce your symptoms? Well, first Firstly, even if you get rid of some of your symptoms, the root causes of your stomach problems are still likely to be damaging your gut as well as other areas of your health too. Secondly, your stomach acid is supposed to be acidic, obviously. If you've got stomach acid going back up your food pipe, then the problem is that your stomach acid is in the wrong place. And if you've got pain in your tummy from stomach acid, then the problem is often your stomach lining. So getting a medication to reduce stomach acid production could well be missing the point. If you're put on a short course of antacids to reduce symptoms whilst you tackle the underlying causes, then that's one thing. But in reality, people get left on these for years without any plan at all about tackling the underlying issues. Unfortunately, it's extremely uncommon that anyone has warned them about the following. It's no massive surprise that drastically altering the pH of your stomach could cause negative changes in your gut microbiome, along with an increased risk of gut infections. If you alter the natural environment of your digestive tract, again, perhaps not too hard to imagine that it may cause problems with vitamin and mineral absorption, notably B12 and magnesium, as well as calcium, iron and vitamin C. Increased risk of bone fractures, probably due to an alteration in bone metabolism, is a well-recognised problem with proton pump inhibitors, though I doubt most patients are adequately informed of this. And here's a really concerning one. Proton pump inhibitors are thought to increase your risk of cardiovascular disease because they decrease the production of nitric oxide by your blood vessels. Nitric oxide is extremely important for the health of your arteries. It reduces blood pressure, keeps your blood vessels dilated, stops platelets sticking to your blood vessel walls, helps in the repair of blood vessel linings and reduces arterial inflammation. The fact that a medication intended to reduce stomach acid can affect cardiovascular health is a prime example of the unintended and far-reaching consequences of pharmaceutical drugs. And by the way, nitric oxide production is one of the key reasons why breathing through your nose and not your mouth is absolutely essential for good health. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, definitely check out the video on breathing, which I've linked in the description. And just to top it off, there is likely to be an increased risk of dementia too probably by a number of different direct effects on the brain, as well as due to the nitric oxide impacts on the brain's blood vessels. B12 deficiency can also cause the symptoms of dementia. All these sources are in the description for further reading. These are the sort of gambles you do not have to take with lifestyle changes. So assuming you have had any sinister underlying condition ruled out by your doctor, I often recommend the following to patients that I see. Firstly, your gut, including your stomach, need a rest every day. You need to give it at least 12 hours overnight each day without any food or drink other than water so that it gets a proper chance to heal. Making sure you only eat within a limited time window during the day so that you get that proper overnight fast is called time-restricted eating and unless you measure your age in months you should probably be doing it. Maximizing the time between your last food of the day and bedtime, ideally to at least two to three hours, will mean going to bed on an empty stomach and that's gonna help acid reflux. There is also a circadian rhythm in stomach acid production. If you eat late at night, more stomach acid is produced than would have been if you'd had the exact same meal earlier in the evening. Weight loss is also key. Excess belly fat means excess pressure, pushing the contents of your stomach back up your food pipe. Time-restricted eating will be an important tool to help with weight loss, as will eliminating overly processed foods. Things like sugar, white flour, seed oils, vegetable oil, artificial sweeteners, preservatives, and flavorings. All these may be causing your gut lining a problem. And since they are all junk food, they can all go. I've linked my book in the description if you want the full rundown on nutrition. Talking of junk food ingredients, energy drinks are a classic cause of indigestion. And that brings me to caffeinated drinks, which you should eliminate completely if you're having any problems, at least for a trial period. They are a major trigger for some people, as is coffee, even if it's decaffeinated, and as are just hot drinks in general for others. And the other drink that needs to go completely is alcohol. This is a well-known stomach irritant. And if you're having any symptoms, your weekly intake needs to be zero. Don't smoke. Don't have any spicy food, at least for the time being. All medications can cause gut issues, so these all need to be considered by your healthcare professional. 
the most common culprits are anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen. And last, but definitely not least, Stress wrecks everything and your stomach lining is no exception. Stress alone could be the cause of all your symptoms. Also, if you're eating in a stressed fight or flight state, you're more likely to rush your meal, which leads easily to overeating, which is a definite cause of problems. So before you eat, make sure you use one of the quick stress reduction techniques that I've linked in the description, since you need to be eating in a relaxed rest and digest state. The same thing applies to IBS. I hope these tips help you out. If you're interested in other unexpected drug consequences, definitely check out my video on paracetamol, which again, I've linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.